Ed, I'd like to start with General Conway, who, by the way, has to leave us a little early for another event that he's doing here at the hotel. So I'm going to ask him to make an opening statement here. From and here. then, yeah, from right there. Okay. Uh, yeah. Well, first of all, thanks, Jerry, for the nice introduction. My mother would be happy with that introduction. My mother-in-law would still be skeptical, but that's another story. Uh, and folks, it is great to be with you this morning. I apologize for having to leave early because I think it's going to be a, a great session uh, in, in, in its finality. Um, the Chinese have an old expression, and may you always live in interesting times. Uh, and I think we're there. Uh, just to cover quickly, uh, we've got turmoil uh, in the Middle East times three. Of course, in Syria, with, with a, a four-sided fight that's, that's taking place there, the establishment of a caliphate, which has always been the, the Islamic extremist grand strategy, uh, moving uh, east. Uh, you've got a situation in Iraq uh, that hopefully will get better in the near term uh, as the new government uh, starts to uh, take shape, as they revitalize their army, uh, include the Kurds, who are pretty tough guys uh, in this fight, and our old friends, the Sunni tribal leaders, I think have a direct conflict now that's going to open itself with ISIS because ISIS is going to attempt to consolidate this caliphate. They're going to come into conflict with the, the Sunnis in, in Anbar province that don't buy their dogma. And uh, we, uh, we need to get involved in that. And, and, and time is an, is an issue here. The sooner, really, uh, the better. Iran, uh, just further uh, west, is, uh, is a real problem for us. Uh, in, in many ways, but, but not least, of course, which is, is a nuclear issue, and we should not lose sight on that in, in my mind. If I was still advising the president, I would have two uh, elements of advice for him on Iran. One, we don't need them with what we're going to do uh, in the Middle East. Uh, we are powerful enough to do it without them, and to involve them only makes us look weaker and them look stronger. So please don't do that, Mr. President. Uh, the second thing is don't lose sight of the long-term objective to make sure that Iran does not one day possess nuclear weapons. It will co cause tremendous instability in that region of the world. They're seen as the major power already. Uh, to, to have them have nuclear weapons is simply going to cause weapons to proliferate in countries like Egypt and Turkey and, and perhaps even Egypt. So we, we just don't need that. Uh, Russia. Uh, in my mind, Vladimir Putin is a very dangerous man. We're all products of our experience, uh, but his experience when the wall came down was that he was a lieutenant colonel in the KGB. For most of the rest of us, it was the introduction of a new world order. For him, it was abject defeat. And now he's in a position, I think he believes, to do something about that. He's very narcissistic, uh, which makes him in some ways unpredictable. But he also has the advantage of location, a powerful nation we should never forget. There's one nation on the face of the earth that could destroy us tonight, and that's Mother Russia. Uh, and, uh, and I think uh, intent in this case, uh, to poke us in the eye every chance he has uh, for as long as he has the opportunity to do that. If you move all the way out west to the Pacific and China, uh, China concerns me, you know, there's, there's little history of major trading partners actually coming to conflict. And yet, in the case of China, uh, it concerns me for the long term. Part of that is because uh, the most uh, bombastic people in China, with their newfound military and, and, and power projection capability, are their admirals and generals. Normally, pardon me, sir, it's a politician uh, who is, is hammering the table, but in this case, it's the admirals and the generals. And the last time we saw that, folks, was, was pre-World War II Japan. So I'll finish with these thoughts. Uh, there are lots of challenges out there that require U.S. leadership. Some of these issues, I think, exist now because of the vacuum uh, that our absence of leadership has caused in the past. So I would offer, again, we need to stay involved. We need to be in a leading role in virtually all of these with our partners and allies. And to do that, we need a, a strong Department of Defense that is able to respond uh, to our Commander-in-Chief. Thank you. Thank you, General Conway.